So um, your brand is shorthand for your story. Um, you know, it's not just a pretty picture. In fact, your logo, you can think of as kind of a, an empty container. So the story that you tell about your company and the story that other people have with your product services and experiences, that's the content uh, that really goes into that empty container. Um, you know, symbols don't mean anything other than what they symbolize. So, you know, a lot of people spend so much time and energy on those symbols and then they don't spend enough uh, time and energy on, on what they are supposed to symbolize. So you really want to crystallize this story that you tell about your company. And also you want to reflect the story that other people have with your product services and experiences. So one way to do that, um, you might ask, how do we do that? <laughs> One way to do that is on your About Us page on your website. Um, you know, if you have a really boring About Us page that is basically, we were founded in 1947 and we do, um, you know, we're a charter operation operating out of the state and, you know, that kind of thing, that's all good. But what people really want to know is what's your story? You know, why are you different than every other company that does charter operations out of that state or, you know, whatever the situation is? I thought this was a really good About Us page. This has, um, number one, it has pictures of people, uh, which test as one of the best um, and most engaging types of content is pictures of people. Uh, people like to know who they're doing business with, and they like to put a face behind a conversation, uh, and they like to know, you know, if they met you at a trade show six months ago, they want to put that together with, this is the person that I talked to. And the way they did this one is they did these little baseball cards. So if you click on these, they flip over and you can see their superpowers um, you know, based on, on uh, a number of different factors um, and the industry, their personal things and, and uh, uh, their superhero strength and so forth. So, um, you know, I think that's a really cute way of portraying, um, you know, what people do in your organization. Um, cute is not always good, but I think here it works because it's very clear as well. You know, this is the person that I want to talk to about this. And that's a, a person I want to talk to about this other topic. It's also very engaging. What do you think, John? Definitely not aviation, but it gets the idea across. Oh, I think it could be used in aviation. Yeah. You could have your ground crew, you know, um, have different people do those kinds of things. I know aviation is a, a much more conservative field than some others, exactly. but if you're doing, you know, creative services in the aviation industry, um, you could do something like this, but somewhere between this and um, what we traditionally see is probably the ideal. All right. So testimonials become part of your brand. Um, you know, what people say about your company. So when you get a great des testimonial and, you know, we do a lot of other classes about how to get testimonials um, for now, we'll just say when you get a fantastic letter uh, from a client or um, when somebody puts a fantastic comment on your LinkedIn page and so on, um, ask them permission to use that and use them on your about us page, because not only do people want to know what do you say about your company, I would much rather hear what do other people say about your company, especially if that's somebody that I, uh, whose opinion I value. So you want to use those um, on your about us page, use those in your introductory marketing materials when you send someone uh, a package. Uh, you want to make sure that you have maybe a, a little brochure of testimonials or include them in your other printed materials. You also want to get those on video when you can, um, you know, when you have a customer in your, your office, uh, you can just ask them, you know, would you mind spending 10 or 15 minutes talking about your experience with us and then just interview them um, really quickly and, uh, you know, use that on your website and, and other places with their permission, of course, but that is really the very best form of, uh, of advertising that you can do. So questions about earning versus buying a brand. Um, couple. Shouldn't we include brand? Shouldn't we include our brand on everything we do? Yes, you should. Um, with a caveat that um, you really need to go light-handed with um, people that don't know you very well, and then increase that as you go go forward. And we'll we'll talk more about that as we go forward. But every piece of paper that comes out of your office should definitely be identifiable as who it's coming from. 
and you know using some of those elements with a, a light touch to start with and then getting bigger and, and, and more interesting as you go forward. Other questions? Well, sort of. Mm -hmm. A comment slash question. Okay. Um, I love those comments slash questions. <laughs> That's hard to uh, interpret those. The people that use Madison Avenue still tries to sell glossy ads in magazines. Mm -hmm. And some people buy off on it. How do you how do you talk to somebody who has been sold mm -hmm. in your company? Um on buying big glossy ads as an approach to doing this correctly. Right. Well, there's two schools of thought in, in advertising. One is the Madison Avenue branding approach, and the other one is kind of the more direct response school of, of, uh, of marketing. Um, ABCI falls more on the direct response form of marketing because we work with small to medium-sized companies and some larger ones. Um, that do not have um, $100,000 to plunk down on a full page glossy beautiful ad and don't have $100,000 to go to a trade show every other month. Um, if you do not have that kind of budget, then the Madison Avenue approach is not going to be as effective. Um, the second thing is that um, the Madison Avenue approach is, is pretty um, business to consumer rather than business to business. So if you're selling directly to consumers, um, you know, that uh, slick glossy approach may be more appropriate. When you're talking about a business to business approach, uh, business customers have a lot more questions. They don't want their time wasted. They're not as interested in entertainment. Uh, they're not as interested in the, the beautiful Santa Claus and, you know, those other kinds of things. They really want to know what can you do for me? So I would rather do an ugly ad <laughs> that gets people's attention, gets the point across, and gets them to buy, rather than doing a beautiful ad that lends awards that you hang on the wall, but that don't lead to customers. So if that's a choice between the two, we'll go with the ugly ad. In other words, you have to determine your ROI based on your investment. Exactly. We're held to a much higher standard uh, in terms of return on investment and a, and a lower standard in term of, terms of aesthetics. And I don't mean that literally. I mean, we don't set out to make ugly ads um you know but we do we are more concerned with what works than with what looks good okay. yeah cool all right you know you're cool